Gorn Granger grew up in London during the Blitz, only a few minutes' walk from the theatres of the West End. He worked in rep in the late 1950s, and in the 1970s he joined the National Theatre, where he was mentored by Laurence Olivier, whose official biographer he later became. However, Gorn Granger's acting career started while he was still at school. My very first job in the theatre was um, King's Rhapsody with Ivan Novello, and I played Ivan Novello's son at the Palace Theatre in 1940-something or other. How did that come about with your parents in the business? No. What happened was I'd, I'd done a bit of a, a, a lot of acting at school and loved it. And uh, I was at school at Westminster City, which is in Victoria, and I used to go there on a 38 bus every day. And we lived in Red Line Square. And I read in the paper that they were looking for a boy to take over from uh, the boy who'd grown too tall in the show. So on the way back from school, I got off the bus, went into the Palace Theatre, and he was sitting in his dressing room. <laughs> he said, oh, you look like I did when I was your age. When can you start? That's how it began. So I, w I'm, I went in to the dressing room, and, uh, and he's ex that's exactly what he said. He said, oh, you looked the way I did when I was and your And you were sorry, age. how old were you then? I... Twelve, twelve. Yeah. So that, that was my beginning. I started at the top and made my way down. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I was part of... I was in the Boy Scouts. And I did a show, a little show, at the um, Bloomsbury Baptist Church. And unknown to me, they invited Ralph Reader along and he saw me and uh, wrote lots of sketches for me for the first gang show after the war, which was a huge thing at... Um, at where was it? Uh, King the King the old King's Theatre in Hammersmith, which is no longer there. Yeah. So those were, those were my sort of beginnings, and because of that, then I worked. I had a radio program called Hello There, which I used to interview people on Saturday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sort of in town tonight for but young how, people. But how did this go? I mean, oh, it was absurd. Just, but this was all off your own bat. Uh, completely, completely. <laughs> It was all. It just all seemed to happen, and uh, and but but, but uh, so. But at, also at that time, I was I was an avid theatre goer, so I would go at least once a week into the gallery. So I'd get six months for my stool. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then I'd sit. Then then I'd I'd always try to get a stool near the front so I could run upstairs and be <laughs> at the front in the gallery, and I saw everything. But I, I, at that time, I was very, very uh, keen on an actor called Michael Redgriff. I thought he was very special. So I went to see him in a play called Winter Journey at the old St. James Theatre before it closed. And I, I sat in the gallery and the play began, but, and through the audience came this actor. And I'd never seen anybody do anything like that before. I was riveted, and, and I was seeing, apparently, the method for the first time. Turns out that this actor was called Sam Wanamaker. I was so... So what year was this then? This would have been in the 50s. I can't remember what year it is now. I could look it up for you. And I was so enamoured with him that I went to see every show he did. So I saw The Big Knife, I saw Rainmaker, Rose Tattoo, whatever he was doing in town. Mm. And lo and behold, a thousand years later, I married his daughter. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's really weird, really weird. But those are my sort of that, those are my early theatre going stuff. But when it sort of happened for me for the first time, when I, I suppose I became a serious actor, uh, because in those days I did a lot of um, I did a lot of television, a lot of radios and things like that. But I was a boy actor. Did it never occur to you or to your parents to send you to stage school? No. Well, I went for a time. I used to go on Saturday mornings to Italia Conti in Archer Street, but that was all. That was all. I, I think they thought it maybe it was something that would just drift away, but it didn't. And and so I got myself all sorts of jobs. I worked as a stagehand on Peter Pan. I worked as um, an extra on the Vienna Operetta when it came to uh, the the old Stoll Theatre. It was in Kingsway. It was this huge oh, opera, yeah, opera yeah. yeah. And the Vienna opera, opera came and they did uh, Princess Shardus and Vienna Blood and Merry Widow. 
and in Merry Widow, they were, they all spoke, um, you know, they were speaking German, Austrian. There were no interpreters, and they sort of explained to me that I was going to be part of a gypsy band, and uh, I would be playing the violin. <laughs> and uh, so we were dressed up, and all the, th all the things went on. This was great fun. And um, it was a ma In those days, the first nights were... All you could see were DJs. Absolutely. It, it yeah, was a special event. The business. And on the first night, it started. And we hadn't rehearsed. They just sort of pushed us around and said, and then you will be here and there. So, um, and I realised that as I was miming the violin, there was somebody in the orchestra playing it, and it was magical, <laughs> absolutely magical. And, of course, nobody told me when to stop. And the orchestra, well, he stopped and I continued for a few <laughs> seconds. I got the biggest laugh ever. And the tenor then chased me round the corridors of the Stoke Theatre and I was out, <laughs> running up Kingsway. But those were very early days. Then well, you, you were paid for these, I take it. And yeah, we got ten shillings a week for I think. And what about your schoolwork? You were still at school? I was still at school, yeah. yeah. And by the time I was... 14, I, I buggered off. I, I, I left school. I didn't do all the things I was supposed to do. Yes, yeah, so I was the same. I, I, was, well, I was actually kicked out because I spent all my time at the theatre. Well, there you are. I had a scholarship. And, and everybody really said, ah, oh, you'll regret it. In, in the 50 years or more since then, nobody no, has no. asked me, not it, once, did you if regret I had, <laughs> Or did I have any GCs? Or did I, yeah, not no, once. Nobody ever asked. No. And that, I mean, you could just turn around and say, yes, I have. Yeah, exactly. I, I've got ten of them. No, but nobody ever even no. asked, so I didn't even have no. the opportunity to lie about it. <laughs> no, and you don't have ticket boxes either. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I know. So that's so, so I buggered off by the time I was 14 and then was working on and off as, a, as a, an actor. But when it sort of kicked off for me was uh, 19, I suppose about 58 or 59. Again, I'm not sure about dates. But I was working um, on, a, on a radio um, with, the, with the BBC rep in those days. I wasn't on the rep, but I used to go in and do shows. And one of the guys on it said, you should do some bit of theatre. And, and I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do some theatre. He said, well, why didn't you come to my theatre? And he ran somewhere called the Frinton Summer Theatre. So I went to Frinton. <laughs> I did ten plays in ten weeks. With um, and with Vanessa Redgrave, it was her first job. We did look back in anger together. Can you imagine? <laughs> in the Women's Institute, and we did. Um, I mean, you probably did this. We used to work um, because it was a, a holiday resort. You'd your first night was on Thursday, so you'd get two shows in one week if yeah. you were if you were on holiday. And we joined. We did everything. We did uh, separate tables. <laughs> we did. Uh, well, you can't call it that now. But Do you remember who was directing then? Yeah, there was one, one guy directed them all. Um, uh, Jeffrey Edwards, his name was. Rings a bell. He was. Does the theatre have a name? Was it? Well, the the theatre. Yeah, I mean, was it Frinton Rep or what? What was it called? It's called Frinton Summer Theatre. Hmm. Yeah, it's still there. I think. I think they still do it. But it was, you know, the last of the weekly reps. Very well, genteel. Apparently. It was. Yeah, it is very genteel. You, you couldn't. Um, there was no pub. The only place you'd get a drink, of course, which we all found out very soon, was the um, Working Man's Club. So we all became members very quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> I was down there playing. Well, I played Jimmy Porter, and I played... How, uh, how old? At what age? I was uh, 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I'd do all the... All the uh, I, I tried to get them at the National a few years ago when I was working there. I said, I've got a really good idea for the Cottesloe Theatre. Why don't we do Weekly Rep? I said, what do you mean? And I said, well, <laughs> you, get, see, you get all your stars and one week they play the lead and one week they play the butler. That's what we used to do. It would have been great fun and it would have filled the place. But, it would, uh, actually. Yeah. You do all this. And you do typical um, rep, rep you as well. You have to do the old plays, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, we... Separate tables. Yeah, separate tables. The most popular yeah. play was um, Ten Little Christie. Knickers, yeah. which I can't call it that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one. Uh, anything Agatha Christie, Spider's Web. It hasn't changed. No. No, so, well, there aren't any reps anymore. That's what's so bad. Well, there is a very good, um, I think it's Bill Kenwright company, I think, that tours Agatha Christie. Really? I think they tour more or less 12 months of the year. Yeah. And they do one show a year, and they tour it for 11 or 12 months. And I think it's called the Agatha Christie Company or something like that. And they're very good indeed. That's mm. terrible. So, after yeah, Frinton. Anyway, so that was my beginnings. Frinton, and then, so after Frinton, I got a job at Dundee. You didn't go to drama school? No. 
Yeah. No, I went straight on. Like this. I went straight on to. So you were at Dundee, because uh, I went to Dundee in 63. Just after me then. And the old theatre, which was in the centre of town, had yep. burnt down. Were you at the old theatre? I was at the old theatre, yeah. Um, because I went there 68 when Derek Goodwin was running it with um, right. Joe Gascoigne. Oh, that was after me, yes, much. Uh, yeah, I spent a year there. Um, it's amazing it burnt down, you because they always had a couple of firemen sitting there all the time, obviously smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was a sweet theatre. It was, it, and who was, well, the company was extraordinary. It was, um, Tony Page was the director. Uh, the company was Nicol Williamson. That's right, yeah. Edward Fox. Yeah. Uh, Glenda Jackson. Uh, Bill Marlowe. Peter Gill. It was an extraordinary company. Well, I mean, even when I was there, I was there. John Thor just le was leaving as yeah. I arrived. Uh, Jimmy Bolan came up and did yeah. three or four plays, yeah. or, or more, and directed a one as well. But it was a very successful theatre. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and Perth as well, just on the road was Yeah, that's good. right, yes. The, there was a festival theatre, what was that called? Oh, yeah, it's um, still there. Yeah. Um, which, um, which, in fact, John called Pit Lockery. Pit Lockery yeah. was involved with. Yeah. No, so it was, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was great. I loved it up there. Yeah, I did too. Good city, the great city. Yeah. That was, a, yeah, did we not, we used to go to Perth, or you'd drive, you'd, you'd go halfway, so you'd get a, so you'd get a drink on a Sunday. <laughs> of course, we were all wild. I mean, Nickel was off the wall. <laughs> Even there. For the rest of his <laughs> life, yes, poor Nickel. So how long were you at Dundee? We were there a year, an absolute year, and, and that's when, you know, that's when you could see... Oh, you could see what Nickel had. He had something that was so frightening and terrifying and brilliant on the stage. He was yeah. an extraordinary man. Um, that was a, sadly a great actor who didn't. He was didn't fulfil it. I mean, he well, he didn't he because of the drink couldn't control it. Yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. For some Ooh. reason, he didn't want to live here. Thank you, darling. That's very smart. Tax, I think. And because and well. biscuits. Wow. I say. How was your class? Was At this right? point, Gorn's wife, Good. Zoe Wanamaker, brought us some tea and biscuits, so, so we decided to take a short break.